Hello, everyone, and welcome to Generation Citizens October uh, webinar for the Global Network. Today, we will be focusing on measurement and evaluation. Um, just a few housekeeping things to begin. I would like to remind uh, those of you watching to please uh, connect with us on our Facebook page, the Global, the Generation Citizen Global Network. We would love to have you participate in discussions and continue to remain in contact with us, share updates from your organizations, ask for best practices, and, and seek out advice from your fellow network partners. So we're excited to keep that initiative rolling and we're thrilled that more and more people are joining every day. So just keep that in mind. Um, back to today's theme. So first we have Yasmin Mafdavi from our uh, measurement and evaluation team at GC. Uh, she will be beginning this webinar for us, speaking about Generation Citizen's approach to measurement and evaluation. And next, we will then have Meechley Jane, the director of CLASI, the Constitutional Literacy and Service Initiative in South Africa, who will be speaking to us about her organization's methods for impact assessment. Uh, lastly, we will be concluding with some information about additional resources on M&E, um, about effectively conveying uh, your organization's data to the public and ultimately sharing your successes about your impact with the more widespread civics community. And lastly, we will conclude with a Q&A session with the speakers, so feel free to ask any questions uh, that may come up throughout. So, um, on that note, Yasmin, I will turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Welcome. I'm Yasmin Mahdavi, and I work on Generation Citizens measure, Measurement and Evaluation Efforts. Today, I will cover the why, the what, and the how of GC's approach to M&E. I will review why m and &E matters, how we go about measuring and evaluating our work, what we measure and why, and what um, are some of our challenges and how do we learn from our efforts. And we will end with an open discussion. Before we get started with the agenda, I'd like to share with you our mission and vision. These guide our programming and the services we render, as well as inform us on how, why, and what we should measure and evaluate. Um, you can see here, we work to ensure that every student in the US receives an effective, um, active, uh, effective action civics education, which provides them with the knowledge and skills necessary to participate in our democracy as effective um, and learned um, citizens. So this is a this mission and vision are crucial in our uh, understanding of how we want to measure and evaluate our impact. And here's our vision, um, where we envision young folks um, being effective and active citizens. Now, what does measurement? Why does measurement and evaluation matter? Um, is a question that probably most folks ask. And uh, it may vary from different, in different organizations. But in our case, we use it to build on areas we've excelled. We use it to direct attention to areas where we've struggled and to answer why we lack in certain areas and how we can improve them. And of course, last and certainly not least, so to make informed strategic decisions about excellent quality programming, resource allocation, and capacity deployment. So our theory of change is what I like to um, discuss now that I've talked about why m &E matters. Um, and the theory of change is really the first step on how we measure impact. Here's a slide of our theory of change. We think that having an explicitly defined theory of change qualifies and quantifies our mission and vision, and it holds us accountable to our work, and it helps us define how we should proceed and design M &E, our M&E efforts. Um, I know it's a complicated um, screen, but in a nutshell, it states that in order to have 
and active and a learned citizenry, one has to build on demand for having a learned citizenry and effective education for the youth. So that's our theory of change in a nutshell. And our next slide um, is, talk, is going to discuss a, our logic model, which is to be updated towards the end of this year. But I'll talk about it to, um, regardless of um, how it's on its way out. But we use our theory of change then to build our logic model. Um, as I mentioned, this version will soon be updated as our management team is working on updates. But for illustrative purposes, I've included in today's presentation, you see that we start by defining our inputs on the left side of the screen, and then it goes on to our activities, our outputs, finally our outcomes and impact. This change, if you will, this chain, if you will, helps us define that along each silo, we have certain deliverables which feed into the next step. It's an iterative process with constant feedback loops. So some organizations don't rely on logic models. I personally think they're extremely useful and can create much transparency internally and externally. Our final goals, as you saw from the logic model, center on the cultivation of three indicators which our academic experts have agreed best predict the likelihood of students' future civic engagement, the civic knowledge, civic dispositions, and civic skills. This head, heart, and hands graphic that we use in our students' handbooks to introduce them to these indicators, our civic knowledge is our students' understanding of the basic governmental processes, structures, and players. Civic motivation or dispositions, our students' desire to actively participate in the political process. Civic skills are students' ability to effectively interact with those processes, systems, and players. And I bring this um, slide up in particular because the very last um, step, or almost the very last step, which are our outcomes in our logic model, specifically target how we affect change in our students' civic dispositions. And these are our three indicators. So we use a range of evaluation tools. We use classroom observations to offer immediate support to DCs. Those are our democracy coach volunteers, um, teachers, and classes, and to combine data on what's working best or stands out to be improved upon in each classroom for use in, um, sometimes in long-term analysis. We administer pre and post semester surveys to sample our students in order to gather information directly from the students um, about their own experiences. We collect surveys at the middle and end of the semester from our DCs and from in-person check-ins at the end of the semester from our teachers. This is to gather um, participant feedback on the program and to gain another perspective on the students experience in the classroom. We also engage in external partners and supplementary efforts to evaluate our programs, and those would be our ad hoc research. Most recently, we did um, some uh, feedback, small groups on um, focus groups um, where we wanted to understand better our medium term impact on our students. Now, practically speaking, for those of you wondering how this is done, we have hard copy and online versions of the student surveys. We administer those um, either in the classroom or if technology is available, we ask teachers to give students URL links to the students so they can complete those online. Our online version of surveys, which we give to teachers and DCs, as well as some students are created in form stack. And once all the surveys are uploaded, um, into Salesforce, we ultimately use Salesforce to create reports for those student surveys. So we also heavily rely on Excel for our, our analysis. And here are some of the ways that we use the information we gather to improve our programming. Um, for example, as a result of last year's analysis, we learned just how valuable it is for our students to interact with adults beyond their classrooms. 
So we created a new lesson in the curriculum to invite community experts to share their insight about classes, focus issues, either as guest speakers in person or on the phone. We also understood that um, systemic root cause, for instance, was a um, challenging concept for our students. So we refined our language around systems and dedicated a full lesson to concepts in our revised curriculum. We saw too that though we're working with full classes of students, not all engaged equally. So we sought to better set the stage for the action civics experience that students would be going through. So we created a research toolkit to support kids or the students, uh, their DCs and the teachers. Um, we created more opportunities for student reflection and developed a new workshop for DC training so that DCs can hone their skills on lesson or better lesson facilitation skills. And lastly, we knew that survey completion and tracking remained a challenge, so we simplified the process and created new tools to help us track. Once all, um, to uh, track all of the uh, systems that are moving. Um, and uh, of course, uh, as many of you can imagine, there are challenges. Uh, and here are some of, um, some of, uh, of outlined. Um, data collection can be quite laborious. So folks may not understand the questions and give us unintentionally incorrect responses. And our response rates could vary. Um, rigorous studies of our programming, like um, randomized controlled trials, may be ideal. Um, they may be ideal for some organizations and not so much for others, but ultimately they are expensive um, and time consuming and especially resource draining. We may learn things also from MNE that take us by surprise, and we may not like some of the findings. But I want to underscore that it's really a crucial process of growing and understanding how we can do things better. And developing and or redesigning appropriate and flexible methodology to capture the quality of a program can be another challenge, especially when you have growth in the organization. Having the staffing um, who can be agile to implement the learning from m and &E is also really important. Um, and this may require m and &E, specific m and &E training and onboarding for all staff. Um, and if you'd like to see some of our reports, they can be found on our website under um, our impact tab. My general motto for m and &E is test, fail, improve, and repeat. And this ends my presentation today, and I thank you for listening. I'm happy to discuss um, any points or answer questions if you have any when we have time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Um, now we'll open the floor for any questions or clarification points. Um, Yasmin, I'm wondering, what exactly is a theory of change? A theory of change is when, and of course, uh, um, practitioners may have different uh, explanations for this, but in my point of, in my view, a theory of change is when you can qualify and quantify how you want your program to operate. Um, it is effectively um, putting in some kind of a logical form your mission and vision of your organization's um, goals. Um, and it summarizes it in quite a, a great gist. Great, thanks. Hi, Yasmin, uh, this is Mitali. I, I'm, thank you for your presentation. I um, was wondering if you could speak to, uh, you mentioned uh, uploading the results of your surveys in um, Excel and, and Salesforce. I'm wondering, does that mean then that you are kind of quantitatively analyzing the results or are you able to kind of input uh, more narrative responses from students? Um, so the, our data efforts, the collection of our efforts are both qualitative and quantitative. So, um, for instance, our mid-semester mid check-ins with the teachers are qualitative, and that's done um, 
by our staff and the teachers. And then at the end of the semester, the teachers, for instance, are given a survey that they fill out online. We download that information. Some of the questions can be quantified um, because they're in either in a scale or a yes or no um, capacity. And some of them are more qualitative. So we have to comb through each response and glean uh, collectively by quantifying the information and uh, individually by qualifying or getting a qualitative analysis of it. So it's a combination of a variety of sources and analytics. So Great, thank you. I also, it, 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 I don't know if it would be possible to share any of your surveys, um, but that would be a useful resource as well. Thank you. Oh, sure. Um, and we can, I'm happy to um, share it with you. If you don't mind sending your contact information to either Sydney or Bonnie, I'm happy to send you a sample of what our student surveys look like. Um, incidentally, we updated the student surveys this fall um, because we found, as I mentioned, one of our challenges was we realized as combing through the surveys that students did not understand the questions or the questions were poorly worded. Um, so we updated some of the, some parts of it and refined it um, to help us better or help us better gauge the students' experience. And one thing I want to mention, in particular with, um, with Generation Citizen, it's really about the students' experience, right? At the end, our m and &E efforts want to ensure that we are effective in how we're teaching our students the things we want to teach them. So it really helps us if we have that vision that this is what we want to get done, then all of the parts, all of the inputs about our program from our staffing to the demand building to our teacher training and our RDC training, all of those play an extremely crucial role in what we want our students' experiences to be and ultimately how their civic disposition is gonna be impacted and affected. So um, we really operate, to, and I hope that I made, um, I made, I underscored that earlier, but this is how really we want to operate and we want that, we operate with that lens. <clears throat> and Yasmin, um, with your permission, we could follow up immediately after the webinar when we always do a follow up email um, and we can include a copy of one of our surveys in it so that you and anyone who couldn't make the call today could take a look at it. Does that sound okay? Um, I caution, okay. I, I don't know yet uh, whether we want to have a large dissemination of it or not. Maybe we could just send a sample, like a few questions or something like that. Sure. I think a sample of it um, to the broader audiences would be great. great. And then separately we can send one. That sounds great. Thank you. Thanks, Yasmin. Excellent. Um, well, thank you so much, Yasmin. Um, and so, Nitali, uh, now we turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Um, so I just kind of threw together a few slides to speak about um, the very beginnings of the m and &E type of me measurements that uh, Classy is engaging in. Um, just a tiny bit of background about Classy. So Classy has been around since uh, 2011 um, in South Africa. Um, and we have a model uh, similar to Generation Citizen of um, working with university students, um, yet we work with, with law students. So um, either LLB students, which are the undergraduate law students, um, or uh, the sometimes we'll work with postgraduate law students, LLM students, master's students. Um, but it's important to note that in, in South Africa, as opposed to places like the US, law is an undergraduate degree. Um, so effectively, these are you know, undergraduate students. Um, and so we train them and they then 
deliver constitutional literacy classes in, in various under-resourced high schools uh, throughout a few select cities in South Africa, uh, Cape Town, Stellenbosch, and then a couple of uh, Johannesburg and, and uh, then the Eastern Cape province. Um, and why we focus on the constitution is that for those who don't know, South Africa's constitution is incredibly um, progressive. It's very vast. Um, and so it effectively, within the constitution, sets forth a very dynamic civic education model, unlike, um, you know, uh, the limitations of constitutions elsewhere. So we focus on the constitution as, as the basis for civic education, as the basis for human rights education, um, and then train what we call the teaching fellows to deliver those, <clears throat> those school workshops on a weekly basis. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to the next slide. Okay, so I'm just gonna speak about a few different methods um, that we've had to, uh, to start to get into M and E, um, kind of listening listening to the previous presentation, I wish I would have put our mission and vision slides as well, um, but that's fine. We'll, we can just uh, get to that as we as we go along. Um, the, I'm going to kind of go into these methods in the way that we uh, encountered them chronologically. Um, to also signify kind of how we've developed in our thinking um, as an organization. Um, so initially, you know, we kind of went with the method that, you know, many, I'm sure people, many organizations go with in terms of measurement, which is, you know, straight from the mouths of the high school students, straight from the mouths of the university students, the testimonials, if you will, of what their experiences have been working with Classy either in workshops or in trainings or in in-school classes. Um, you know, they, they provide us these testimonials um, as a part of uh, evaluations that are done at the conclusion of whatever the event is. So in that sense, we've had, um, you know, ample written testimonials as well as um, video testimonials. And the video testimonials, have been at our request. So they've been um, sometimes when we've launched fundraising uh, drives, fundraising efforts, we've asked uh, particular students that we've worked with over time on a long-term basis, um, if they would you know, do like a, a two minute video clip of themselves that we could load onto our fundraising drive page. Um, and in other instances, it's been uh, students, you know, that we've worked with uh, through specific programs. Um, so we have both the written and the video. And then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these testimonials emerge from both learners, and that's the term given to high school students in South Africa, as well as to the teaching fellows who are the university students. Okay. Sorry, the just further kind of testimonials. And you can see that um, I should have also mentioned with the written testimonials, sometimes it, um, you know, the evaluations that we get at the end of a, a program or a workshop, um, you know, can often be quite hurried as students are kind of hurriedly finishing their evaluations out and heading out the door. Um, but in other cases, what we've done is we've tried to, um, you know, when people have come back to us to thank us for, you know, whatever, uh, whatever their experience has been, we've asked them then to, you know, engage in, in providing a, a longer written testimonial. So, for example, the top uh, testimonial here, um, and indeed, actually, the, both of them are students who uh, we worked with in high school, um, and who contacted us again once they once they uh, reached university to speak about how valuable their their experiences in high school had been to shaping who they've become as university students. Um, so we thought those that's a really great um, you know way to to speak about the longevity of the type of work that of we 
of the work that we do and the impact that we can have that sometimes isn't felt, you know, right away, but can be felt by the learners themselves uh, a couple of years out. Okay. Um, the next kind of built, the next technique, I suppose, for m and &E that has an inbuilt a component of evaluation is what we call moot courts. So as for those who don't know, moot courts are essentially like a fictional, a fictitious court case, um, you know, based on a set of facts and based on a set of uh, informational materials that we provide. Um, and the learners then have to simulate uh, being in a courtroom and advocating as an attorney would. Um, and, and we have, you know, full court setups. Um, we have robes for the learners, which is always really exciting for them. And we have a panel of judges. Um, and so we found that moot courts are such an effective teaching technique. In fact, we didn't anticipate that at the start of our work in 2011. Um, and indeed, at this point, um, we use moot courts both in an informal way, in the classroom, as well as <clears throat> training our learners who are interested to participate more formally in an official um, high school moot court competition that's held annually in South Africa. Um, and of course, for the competition, the kind of in, built in measurement is, you know, based on how well the learners do in the competition itself, if they advance, et cetera. Um, but more importantly for our purposes, because obviously the competition can only accommodate so many uh, learners and, you know, we see success in competition terms as only one measurement of, uh, or one indicator of measurement uh, and, and evaluation. For us, what's more important is how moot courts function on an informal basis. So when we have, uh, when we use moot courts in the classroom setting or in workshop settings, we try to, depending on the amount of time we have, we try to give the learners, you know, all the materials they need to effectively argue. Um, and then what we found is that just the very act of standing up um, in a classroom or in a workshop and in the workshop, it would be in front of you know, other learners from other schools that they don't know. That act itself is a huge, um, it's a huge barrier for a lot of learners. And often, you know, they're very challenged by it and don't want to do it. Um, but then with encouragement from our teaching fellows and staff, they do undertake to you know, do this simulation. And so many times um, what we find is that that in itself becomes a huge mountain that they've surmounted at the end of the week or the end of the class in just being able to get up and speak. Um, so there's a few different ways of measuring that. I mean, one is just the kind of um, measurement from the learner himself or herself about what that experience was like to be able to kind of overcome your biggest fear um, and, and do it. Um, but then we also, you know, have a built-in feedback session after each moot where our judges will give uh, oral feedback to the learners about, you know, things they did really well and things that they, um, you know, could think about improving in the future with guidance. Okay. Sorry, next slide. Um, and then we get into, uh, similar to GC, our theory of change and logic model. Um, so as you can see, <laughs> it, ours is also complicated. Um, but suffice it to say that uh, it, for us, it was a process of, uh, you know, retaining a consultant who worked with us over a few days, um, worked with all of the staff to really understand um, what you know, we've been doing, we only did this theory of change in 20, um, when did we do it? In 20, the end of 2016. Um, sorry, the, yeah, yeah, the end of 2016. So it's, it's a fairly recent uh, endeavor for us. And, um, you know, our, the consultant sat down with us to try to understand the work that we've been doing the preceding five years um, 
the kind of goals that we had as outlined in our mission and visions, uh, mission statement and vision, um, and then tried to understand from our mouths uh, orally kind of what it is that we uh, felt that the organization was striving towards. Um, so in the end, you can see here in the theory of change that we have a, you know, a number of different uh, headings, uh, including, you know, the community's needs, outputs, short-term outcomes, medium-term outcomes, long-term out outcomes, and then ultimately kind of what the, what the broadest impact is that we hope to have in society. And built into our theory of change at the bottom, you'll see our, um, some of the assumptions that we hold um, in, in, you know, coming up with these, uh, in coming up with these uh, metrics, the external influences, and some of the strategies that we use. Okay, next slide, please. And then our logic model, similarly, is, is kind of another depiction of um, the theory of change, uh, but more from kind of logically how it flows. Um, then looking at the, the final impact and, and the evaluation um, that we hope to do. What I can say about this um, is that it's, you know, the theory of change and logic model, I mean, it was an investment of money for us. I think it was a really valuable investment of money. Not so much because we have, you know, these final products uh, to reflect, you know, our, uh, our outcomes, but rather um, because the, the very process itself of going through this was really beneficial, I think, for us um, to be able to reflect on, on what our goals are and what the impact is that we hope to have in the world. Because that's not something that we, as a small organization, have been able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I think it was really helpful to step back with you know, the assistance of, of a, uh, an expert consultant and really let her guide us through this process and then be able to, to come to these conclusions. And then, you know, then now to be able to kind of go to the second step of being able to use this um, to actually start to more rigorously monitor and evaluate um, the programs and activities that we do. Okay, next slide. Um, and then finally, I just mentioned um, social media as, you know, an imperfect means of monitoring and evaluation, but nevertheless, um, one way in which we're able to, you know, at least provide some um, sort of, uh, you know, some feedback to our followers um, and uh, to generate you know, to generate some sort of a community online. Um, this is just a, you know, random tweet from our uh, Twitter account. And then the next slide, please. Um, is there another slide? No, okay. Um, so, and then we also have a Facebook account uh, that, uh, a Facebook page rather where we have, you know, members signing, joining our, our page, and we try to provide somewhat regular uh, updates. Um, and what I would just say, kind of broadly speaking about monitoring and evaluation is that, um, as I mentioned earlier on, we didn't do it um, very systematically. It was more through evaluations, and then we also would have surveys. Um, and uh, you know, again, as GC noted, some of the challenges that we faced with those methods is that, uh, you know, if a learner or a teaching fellow was having an off day and decided that they didn't want to complete it um, or to have heartedly completed, it gave us really an imperfect data set to really understand um, what was happening across the different programs that we run. So um, that's when we started to really feel the need to, to get into more systematic ways of measuring ourselves and our work um, and started to undertake uh, particularly the theory of change and logic model. Um, we've also done uh, in-school observations, um, but because of our staffing being so small, that's uh, something that's a bit difficult for us to do, you know, more than uh, once in a term. 
uh, for for each of the schools that we work in. Um, so I, I'd say kind of in, in conclusion that it's challenging for small organizations that have um, fewer human resources and fewer financial resources. But I do think it's a, a valuable undertaking that helps both funding streams, um, but it also helps just improve the quality of the of the work and the what we're able to deliver to the young people that we work with. Thanks. Thank you, Mita. Um, so now here's a chance for anyone to ask any follow-up questions for me, Um Thank you. Mithili, I was wondering, um, the testimonials that you talked about at the beginning, um, are those open-ended, like where you're just kind of like asking them to, because they've written these long, like beautiful responses. So it, do you just sort of say, tell us about your experience or do you have specific like short answer questions that you provide to them first? For the, uh, for the testimonials, so we get them from two methods. So the one is, you know, from evaluations. And with the evaluations, those are like, you know, th those are prompted by specific questions. So they'll, you know, the, the testimonials that we'll capture will be often a response to a particular question. Um, and they tend to be shorter. For the longer ended, uh, for the longer testimonials, those are open ended. And I think the feeling there for us is that um, we really want to capture what the learner's experience has been in his, in his or her own words without our prompting um, to try to understand kind of where this fits into their life. Um, and also because having a standard set of questions wouldn't necessarily capture the richness of each experience um, given you know, the different circumstances that the, that the learners are coming to us with. I have a question for you. Um, with respect to the testimonials and information gathering, do you do this for every student you have in the program? Um, so again, where we capture testimonials from evaluations, the evaluations are given, you know, they're, they're supposed to be given to every learner. Um, that's a standard procedure, uh, programmatic procedure. But where we go and ask, um, you know, particular learners to provide longer narratives about their experience, that's not for every student. Those are particular, those are really targeted to the, uh, the learners slash university students that come to us. And, you know, They'll come to us often, as I mentioned, years after, and then say that they had a great experience. So then we'll come back to them and say, well, you know, it would be really helpful to us if you could maybe tell us a little bit more about how, why that experience was great for you. That's about the only prompting we'll give. Um, so the first set of evaluations then is, um, or the first set of testimonials is done for every to, given to every student and prompted by, you know, an evaluation. And then the second set of testimonials that I mentioned, those are more targeted to be a response to those who particularly seek us out to thank us. And do you have, um, do you think that's sustainable to question every student as your organization grows or how many students do you have now? Um, so it's sustainable in the sense that, um, well, the, the second method of trying to target only those who come to us, that you know, I think will continue to be ad hoc um, and it has to be ad hoc because it's, um, I think the very beauty of it is the fact that the, the students come to us after the fact. Um, so I think if we were to go to every uh, student that it wouldn't really produce, um, you know, a rich set of, of material. Um, but the first set of testimonials, that I think can continue to be we we get we administer that evaluation for all of the learners that we work with, um, and we capture the testimonials from basically from the surveys uh, or the evaluations where we feel that there's something really rich in there. So we don't. How to, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not compu sounding confusing, but we don't capture testimonials from each and every survey. We just capture kind of we administer the. the across the board, but then we only capture uh, testimonials from some of those evaluations. Okay, thank you. 
And mutually, I just have um, a question. Earlier, you had mentioned that um, you know your organization found it difficult to think about long-term impact during the day-to-day -day work that you do. And I was wondering if you had any advice for organizations who are um, looking to start a more rigorous measurement and evaluation process like Classy just underwent. Um, if you had any advice for sort of main questions to get these folks in the mindset of thinking long-term at this point of their early work. Yeah, I mean, I think there's different uh, incremental steps that organizations can take. Um, so the first um, was that, you know, we, we started doing our work without a mission and vision, mission statement and vision. So the first step for us was really internally to come up with that. And that didn't require for us to, you know, seek any sort of external assistance. We just had to really build that into our own strategy meeting um, and, and spend the time to really come up with that. Um, I think, you know, then we, I think organizations could really start thinking about um, what are the things that they're already doing that serve as some sort of evaluation, however imperfect, um, and are there ways to kind of strengthen those? Because those would be the, I guess, you know, in, in some senses, the most affordable or cheapest way to build in or to strengthen an m and &E process that's already kind of uh, in the organization, if you will. Um, and that's where, for example, for us, the moot courts, that became a really, um, it became a good candidate for that, something that we were already doing, but could ramp up in terms of using it as a measurement tool. Um, but then I think, you know, after doing those steps, if an organization is still interested in going further, I think then it, it really um, helps to kind of start um, to start asking around whether there's people in their community who um, excel at m and &E type um, analyses. And, you know, what we found was that when we started poking around that at the university, at one of the local universities, um, that there were researchers who were interested in uh, undertaking an m and &E analysis for us for free because this is also part of the research that they're doing academically. Um, ultimately, we didn't go with them and we ended up paying a consultant, um, but it was mostly because of timing issues and, and so forth. But I think that there are, you know, there are a lot of experts out there who may be willing to um, conduct or go through this process with organizations on a reduced fee or um, pro bono basis, depending on where they're situated. Um, and, if that's not the case, then I think that, you know, uh, fundraising for that additional expense is, 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 you know, really important. And I do think a lot of funders, um, they, they understand the importance of this because ultimately it benefits, you know, the reports that they receive from, from their grantees. Great. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. Um, any, uh, Final comments or questions? None for me. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Well, Yasmin and Meetly, thank you so, so much for your insight. Um, it's extremely helpful for us and for those who will be viewing this webinar afterwards. Um, so, next, I just wanted to quickly share some additional resources to the wonderful advice that we've received today. Um, and in a follow-up email, you'll also be receiving these links um, to some articles and books that can be helpful uh, for really enhancing the M&E process in your organization. Um, so here we have a slide just talking about a couple of articles. Um, the first one is called Telling Your Data-Driven Story Well. Um, and this piece really focuses on the communications aspect of measurement and evaluation, sharing with the public all of the good work that your organization is doing and what you're trying to improve upon. Um, and the next article focuses on special evaluation and measurement of outcome tools. So to the right, you can see some links that are included in this article that can be helpful for those of you starting out um, 
in this more to create more rigorous M&E uh, processes in your work. So hopefully those will be helpful for you. Um, next slide, please. And furthermore, um, we have two examples of renowned books that really focus on how to uh, conduct effective measurement and uh, evaluation techniques to make it something that is rigorous and also helpful for your organization and helpful for outsiders, for funders and the public to, to see the important impact that your organization is making. So that is Leap of Reason by Mario Moreno and Working Hard, Working Well by David E.K. Hunter. These books were also mentioned um, in the last article that was on the last slide. Um, so you can get links there or uh, again, we'll be emailing out this information. So just some, some helpful tools in addition to the webinar uh, for those of you who, are, who want some more information, but also um, Yasmin and Meetly, if it's all right with you, uh, we would love to send out your contact information and information um, about your organizations, Meetly, um, about Classy to no the partners in a follow-up email. Sure, that's fine. Wonderful. Okay. And so with that, um, we are now done with our October webinar again on measurement and evaluation. Yasmin and Meetly, thank you again. And for those of you watching uh, or who are with us today, we will be sending out a follow-up email. Um, and for those who weren't able to join us, we will be posting this video on our YouTube channel. You can access that through our Weebly website um, and also through our global network email chain. So thank you all again, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.